Barnsley Main Muckstack. Or for the benefit of the uninitiated, Barnsley Main Slag Heap. You always know when you're in Barnsley when you see this, and you can see it from almost any part of the town. And I'll tell you what, it's hard work walking up it. But I'll bet it was a damn sight harder work digging it out. And when you get to about here, you always turn around and admire the view. Really, you're not admiring the view, you're getting your breath back. In Barnsley at one time, there wasn't a lot of work other than the pits. In fact, there was no work at all. The girls of the town used to come and collect them from places like Huddersfield and take them to work in their mills and bring them back at night in buses. But the real reason we've come to the top of Barnsley Main Muckstack is because it gives you the best view of Barnsley. Just look at that lot. No joke living in Barnsley No joke around the town Those folk living in Barnsley All know what they've found Barnsley Town Hall, without doubt the best known landmark in the town. A magnificent edifice, built some 40 years ago to reflect and express the civic pride of the burghers of this borough of Barnsley. Now I know to some of you that Barnsley has replaced Wigan as the butt of a lot of comedians' jokes, but I'm going to take you to meet people and show you places that will prove that it's no joke living in Barnsley. And one of the best things about Barnsley is the market. It's famous for it. It's a real place for bargains, and Barnsley folk love a bargain. They used to come to the market from miles around. I wonder if they still do. Now it's under one roof, just like other markets. A lot of folk in Barnsley have mixed feelings about it. But you can still see some of the famous old characters. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's half a dozen down there if you'd like to buy those. Now, they're made by James Broder, something like a plate. They'll neither bend, break, nor wear out. I'll see if I can find one buyer not 35 or even 30 pounds, 29, 28. This is the main market, which is open every day of the week, of course. It extends much further than this on a Wednesday and a Saturday market days. At the top of this escalator, you'll see Oakfields, the original PM pie stall. I'll tell you a story about that. Oakfields used to be outside in the open market. It was all surrounded by white linen sheets. And my grandma took me there one day. And because we were a bit posh, you see, I mean, we had a shop. My mother wouldn't let me say the and the. Anyway, I was in there with my grandma, we had his first pie and peas, and then she said, would you like some more, love? I said, yes, please, grandma. And she said, the, the, would. And I said, I'll tell me, mum. Now, this is the open part of the new Barnsley market. It's not a lot like what it used to be. Didn't have these fancy plastic covers over. All they had were tarpaulin sheets. And in the old days, the market used to stretch all over the town, all up Market Hill, all over the place. What do you think to Barnsley Market, love? It's all right, why? You like it, do you? Yeah. It's not bad. Do you prefer the yeah, old one? It. Could be better. Not no up. way, no. Oh, I quite like it. The character's it. gone. Hello, love. Hello. Come out here. You're a stall old here, aren't you? Yes, I am. And can they always get a good bargain in Barnsley Market? Yeah, I think Barnsley Market's the best market for anyone. It's the cheapest one. Here, I know her. Come here and talk to me. Come here. Is she your little girl? Bye. Is that your little boy? Yeah. I used to teach you at school, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. I used to teach her. Do you like Barnsley Market, this new market? No, not really. Do you prefer the old one? Yeah. It's too close to, too crushed up, isn't it? So a lot of people don't like Barnsley Market as it is. But a lot of people do. I don't know. I think I'm ambivalent. Now this is what you'd expect to see in a place like Barnsley. There's no hiding the fact that the mining industry has left its scars and its grime on the town. But we have got some smashing parks. Lock Park near the town centre. And just a couple of miles outside Barnsley, we've got Cawthorn. Best kept village in South Yorkshire. Won the title. But let's get back into town to Channel's pub right in the centre where they serve one of the best pie and pea lunches you could ask for and a good pint makes it a very popular meeting place. 
I just can't get back fast enough. Yeah, Once I come back, back and see this area, I'm yeah. home and that, that's fine by me. Yeah, that's great. Arthur Scargill, president of the Yorkshire Miners, based here in Barnsley. It's, um, it's Yorkshire, you know, because it's the genuine Yorkshire folks from Barnsley. I mean, Harrogate, I mean, I don't call Harrogate Yorkshire, really. You know? Ashley Jackson, a local artist who started as a sign writer. <laughs> Charlie Williams, cross him and you'll get some black looks. The only thing what knocks me about Barnsley is when I'm down south and you say, where do you come from? They say Barnsley. They don't say Barnsley, they say Barnsley, as though you're, you're, you're all thick, you know. At least nowadays they don't say Barnsley. Where is that? They all know where Barnsley is now, but it is, yeah. Every, every, everybody knows Barnsley for one reason or another. Yeah, yeah. The tragedy is that his football team isn't, uh, isn't oh, in first division, you know? Yeah, that's it, Something that ought to be put right. Hey, what, now then, don't, don't, don't <laughs> knock the football. You're, you're treading on dangerous ground here. I enjoyed some great games at Barnsley, second division. If you're a Barnsley man, and I am. And if you're a football fan, and I am. And what Barnsley man worth is salt isn't. And let's face it, they deserve a bit better support to talk well nowadays. There's a place in this town that should be a shrine. Everybody should come and see it. It's a grave. It's a grave of a footballer. And in my opinion, the best footballer we ever bred in this town. We sold him. You always have to sell your best things if it's a little struggling club in a little struggling town. We sold him to Manchester United. I think about £30,000. Remember the first report, Eric Todd wrote it, he said, he rose like a trout to the fly and nodded it in. It's Tommy Taylor's grave, killed at Munich in 1958 with the rest of that wonderful Manchester United side, the Busby Babes. Not all of them were killed. Bobby Charlton survived, he's still going strong. But Tommy went. It's easy to be wise with hindsight and think he was the a wonderful footballer he was, but when he left Barnsley, a lot of the supporters were rather pleased to see him go. They thought that Manchester United might have bought a pup. But Matt Busby knew better. Within months of leaving Oakwell, he was playing for England. He was a great centre forward. And here he lies with his mother. I went to see his father the other day. He's in an old folks home just over the brow of the hill. He cried when I told him we were coming to see the grave and I was very sad myself. Here he is, within sight and sound of the ground where he started his professional career. Barnsley Football Club, Oakwell. <laughs> Oh, watch this one. I saw this is the cup finals, doesn't it? Somebody's got. How do you get Brian? You trying to get me knackered? <laughs> You know what they say? That when you're getting old, the policemen look younger. Well, have you seen this lot? Look like schoolboy to me. Oh dear. I'm very, very tired. I've done it. I've played an oak well. <laughs> Always wanted to, and now I've done it. I nearly did it before. I play for Barnsley Boys. I mean, not only done that, but a good side. 48 49, English Schools Trophy, Yorkshire Shield. I played in the semi final of the English Schools Trophy at Vetchfield, Swansea. I played against Lenall Church. Then they dropped me. They dropped me for the final at oak well. I never played an oak well. But I've done it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so keep your hands to yourself. <laughs>
Ah, I don't see you. Dorothy, yeah, give, oh, give, give it a seat. How are you, my love? I'm fine. Nice to see you. Get off that chair. I'm <laughs> I'm <laughs> Dorothy Iman, Barnsley's <laughs> own Olympic medalist. If you don't sell it, move closer to him. I don't know what the reason is. There you are, my flower. Have a drink. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. To you. <laughs> it'll be Christmas before you get Dorothy, another. These two, these two blokes are reminiscing about Barnsley, oh. and, and they're saying what they like about it, what they dislike about it. What do you think about the place? Um, I don't know really. It's home to me, and uh, I think cool. this is it. You know, I suppose wherever I'd have been born, it would have been home. Uh, but the thing is, I'm not ashamed of coming from Barnsley. That's it, proud of it. You know, proud of I think it. this is the trouble is most yeah. people, they make jokes about us and what have you, and people tend to hide the fact that I'm very proud of coming from Yorkshire and Barnsley. Well, at least we've got four of us that don't agree with that. Oh, oh, <laughs> <right now. laughs> Jobs are going to be unanimous. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's it, yeah. that vote's carried. Now, this is the most famous shot in Barnsley. It must be, because when all these famous filmmakers come here, they all want to take this view. Ken Roach. And he's very famous. He came here and took this shot when he made his film, Guess. And while he was making it, Clive Donner was round the corner because he wanted to take this shot as well. And Michael Tuckner, when he made a film of my play, Keep an Eye on Albert, he took this view. But the reason I've brought you up here is not to take this shot because what I want to show you is down there in the bottom. Hello, Hello Reg. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Not so bad. Couple of ferrets, have you? Ah, I just play, let dog play about with them a bit, you know. <laughs> now then, what about that? Eh? Uh, now, what about that? To kill them? No, she'll play all day with them. Is that a ferret or a polecat? That's right? a polecat. What's the difference? Well, there's not a lot of difference because the, it's bred off white ones. It's bred off this one, as a matter of fact. They throw different colours. They look like a stoke bread. Now, don't nip her. <laughs> oh, Time to go back. <laughs> Aye. Hey, anyway, Red, what's this out? about this fellow who's put these ferrets down his trousers? Aye, I, there was a television about a bloke putting them down his trousers. We've had them down for donkeys. Watch this. Anyone you want. We're not bothered. Now, I don't want you singing soprano, it's quiet. We're not bothered. Which well, there it goes, look. <laughs> hey, where's it gone now, Reg? It's around the leg there. Oh, I'm glad. Can't put half a dozen down. Anyway, pop it away, Reg, and show me your rabbits. There's some lovely right. rabbits, this fella. Hey, a real old character, this, you know. There's a lot of them like this in Barnsley. Oh, the little place where they come down when they're out of that pit. So look at these rabbits. Yeah. The old days, I remember Barnsley, when you used to go down New Street, and there used to be the Bobby there, stood at the bottom with a big tash. Yes, he's gone. He's gone, isn't he? Uh -huh. You know, I mean, the characters like that, you know, I've forgotten his name, but people who came through Barnsley would say, oh, yeah, I remember Barnsley, because... You know, there was so and so there. Just been to see my dad over this wall, Barnsley Cemetery. He's been in there a good few years now, but they still talk about it in this town. Busy road, this, I better be careful. Perhaps that's why they call it Cemetery Road. Aye. Everybody knew Charlie Glover. So well known in this town. They always used to say that the town hall clock used to nod to him. Well, here, just across the road from where he lies, is a very special place, a special place to him. Charlie Glover's gym. My father, Charlie Glover. He always had a gym in Barnsley. He used to be a boxer and then a wrestler. He taught me to wrestle. This is no suntan and sweatshop. No sauna palace, this. It's a real sweatshop. Be more blood on this floor than a pork butcher's floor. There's one of these in every northern town at one time. There's only a few left now. We've got one here in Barnsley. And it's a good gym, this. Produce some real fighters. A couple of good lads here as well. But it's not only boxers we're famous for in Barnsley, as Charlie Williams knows. You still go back to some tribe and pigs trotters. <laughs> and it's as well, simple like as that. I like pigs trotters. I don't like tribe. Well, I, I like, like tribe, but I don't like pigs trotters. Well, I like them both. <laughs> oh, no, I don't like tribe, and I don't like oh, compromise. Well, a bit of cannibal in me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't tell me you like sweetbreads as well. Oh, yes. Oh, look how I am. Pigs trotters, will you? 
Pies have come, as they would say. Yeah, <laughs> what are you having? What are you having, love? I'll have pies and peas. Listen, well, you have these, my darling. Dorothy, you can have anything you want as long as it's pies and peas. Yes. Albert says. Albert says. The best. You can have anything you like except money. <laughs> Can, can you remember in the middle of Barnsley, when the old market was there, they used to have a, used to have a, a tent where you could get peas and pie. Before, uh, you know, I remember the caravan thing. thing. Oh, before yeah. caravan, there used to Wait, be a Gash tent. Nook. That's right. That's right. That's easy, and you could go in this tent and get peas and pie. And it was pretty freezing in the tent, yeah. but they got a fire going inside. And I don't know whether it was the psychological effect or what, but to go in there and get these peas and pies on a Saturday afternoon with your mum and dad or whatever it was, great. It was an achievement. Oh, it was an achievement, aye. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, there were no going out for meals them days, were there? You can travel the length and breadth of the land and you'll not find a finer restaurant than this one. That's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. And you'll not find one that gives you better value, I'll tell you that for nothing. 165, there's a special lunch and I'm having pigeon. There's anything you want here, the most exotic dishes. And the proprietor's not paying me to say this, you know, I really mean that. There's a wine list as long as you're armed. You'll not find a better wine list in London. The proprietor's a fellow called Jim Gratney. He came here nine years ago and he converted what was then an ice cream factory into the Brooklyn's Restaurant in Barnsley. It's one of the finest in the land, believe me. And it's done a lot to change that cloth cap image that we're not proud of in Barnsley. You can't say Barnsley's all pie and peas after this lot. And they're all enjoying themselves as well. Mm. Quite honestly, I wouldn't leave this area for all the team channel. I love Barnsley. I just, I just love the area. I was born here, and as far as I'm concerned, I'll stay here all my life. I think it's a, it's a fabulous area. Fabulous? Well, fabulous for some, maybe. Young lads in bars, they have always had a fairly difficult job in getting out of the rut of following their dads down the pit. Even today, there's many who go straight from school underground. But life's easier than it was, and the money's good too. But, well, I don't know. It seems somehow wrong to me to work down there when you're still a lad. Born to blush unseen. Hi, Brett, lad. Ryan. How are you? Not too bad. Not working today? No, I've just finished on days. On days? Uh, Time you start for that? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Time yeah. to finish. About one o'clock. One o'clock. Time to get up. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Four one. What are you doing at pit? Not haulage. Not haulage. Yeah. Uh, What's haulage? It's taking all tubs up to the face, like four men up face, all supplies. How much you get for that? About twenty-six pounds to fetch you home. Twenty-six pounds to fetch you home. Yeah. How old are you? Seventeen. It's not bad for seventeen, is it? No, yeah, it's not too bad. Was there any other choice but the pit? No, I went straight to Pip from school, like. Chinatown. That's what we used to call this bit of Lumwood where I was brought up. I can't pretend to be proud of this end of the town. People seem to have lost pride in the surroundings around here, and I'm not surprised. It was a rough, tough area 30 years ago when I were a lad, and it's still the same today. Mind you, every town's got one. Broken down walls, smashed windows. Even the little gardens are overgrown. Not all of them, but most. Maybe one day they'll do something about it. Come on, get your fingers out. Beautiful place, Barnsley. Lovely rolling countryside, trees, flowers, sparkling rivers. Whoever said Barnsley was all slag heaps and cobbled streets. And just to show you, I've come for a ride with David and Sandra Hepworth in their Landau. And here we are in Cannon Hall Park, Cawthorn, just a few miles from Barnsley Town Centre. A lovely spot. So why not enjoy yourselves and come for a ride with us?
briefly at once said that in this area you've got all the beautiful characteristics of Yorkshire and particularly of all the best that's, that's good in the English countryside. And I think looking over the Wurzborough Valley is tremendous and I know that Charlie lives in that area and I, I live in that area. Absolutely beautiful is that valley and it stretches right away from the Stainborough End right across towards Wombwell all skirting around bars and it really is a fabulous area I think anyway to live. Yeah so this is the side people don't see. They think of bars and they think of the pits and the headgears. You know, I remember when I was actually competing, when they came to take films of me, they didn't want to see what I actually did. They wanted to see me running up the, the stacks <laughs> and with the headgear right. in the right. background, yeah. you know, yeah. because this is what they wanted that's to sell. And, uh, well, they, they, wanted, they wanted to see Charlie, you know, with headgear in the background, yeah. but with his colour, they obliterated it. The old Theatre Royal. It's bingo now, of course. This used to be my seat every Friday night. And that seat was my granddad's. It was empty then and all. He never sat in it, although he had it every Friday. He was always in there, the bar, chatting up. I saw all the greats of the variety world here. Izzy, Bon, Kavner, Connor. Wilson, Keppel and Betty, they were great favourites. There were 500 people in here twice nightly. Wilfred Pickle sold this place out, reciting poetry. Betty Driver, she was a star here. Coronation Street now. But my personal favourite was an impressionist. He'd only got one name. They called him Afrique. Afrique, doing Lawrence Tibet, singing on the road to Mandalay, made my hair stand on end. I'd hair in those days. And my granddad, he missed them all. He was always in there, chatting up this barmaid. We like our clubs in Barnsley, a real miners' club this, High Stone Road Working Men's Club, the secretary's Thomas Briscoe. Is this a typical club for, for Barnsley? Well, as it says so, uh, as a working men's club. As a working men's club, this is a typical club. It's not been tarted up too much, has it, this? It's tumbling down with subsidence. It's tumbling down with subsidence. Get on to that NCB, get out of Scargill. <laughs> now listen, what kind of things do you do here? Well, we... Uh, we have tomballer, weekly draw, uh, court double, and a turn every Sunday. Seven, six, seventy-six. Seven, eight, seventy-eight. All the sevens, seventy-seven. One, seven, seventeen. Five, eight, fifty-eight. Two, seven, twenty-seven. On its own, number three. All the trees, 33. Two, nine, 29. Michael, the concert room coming. No, this is Michael. It's when you spend an evening with folk like this that you realise what Barnsley's all about. They're smashing people, and I'm proud to be one of them. I'll say this about them they certainly know how to enjoy themselves. <laughs> She's got a back. I always get the good looking ones, me. Get him off! <laughs> No joke, 
Living in Barnsley No joke around the town Those folk living in Barnsley All know what they've found No joke living in Barnsley No joke around the town Dee dee Meanwhile, he's got an impressive list of film and TV credits to his name and today the much-loved Kez actor Brian Glover was remembered in Barnsley. Yes, from the sitcom Porridge to the 1969 film Kez to the Tetley Tea adverts, Brian's roles were many and varied, despite originally starting his professional life as a teacher and then a wrestler. Well, today he was honoured with a blue plaque recognising his achievements with the guest list at its unveiling, reading like a who's who of the Yorkshire film industry. Adam Fowler reports. Three, two, one. A lasting tribute to a Barnsley legend. A blue plaque unveiled for Brian Glover by his son and director Ken Loach, who made him a star with Kez. Right, and it's Manchester United versus Spurs in this important fifth round cup tie here at Old Trafford. And it's the third slightly balding Charlton to kick off. Glover's tour de force turn as the ultra competitive sports teacher was for many the highlight of the film. It launched Glover's career and helped Kez achieve its status as a British classic. He has had the identity of somebody from Barnsley for many, many years after he'd left, after he wasn't living here anymore, but he, he kind of never, the Barnsley never left him. Let's get back into town to Channel's pub, right in the centre where they serve one of the best pie and pea lunches you could ask for, and a good pint. The plaque's been placed outside a pub Brian filmed in. For Yorkshire Television's It's No Joke Living in Barnsley. To me, he was always Brian, you know, he was always a mate. And, and, you know, you don't look upon your mate as celebs. You look upon a mate you can either have a chat with in a beer, if you want, or even share problems that you're having with. So for me, he was a mate. There was no nonsense about him. He was, he was exactly as you find him. He was down to earth. He was naturally funny. And he was he's kind of serious about the business. You know, he didn't, he didn't go into it just to sort of lock about. He, he took it very seriously. He was just so direct and honest, wasn't he? I mean, it was, I mean, it was great to have around anyway, but I mean, it was, uh, he just had, he just had a, a truthfulness to his thing, which right from the beginning, right from when he was in Kev's, didn't he? He just came on, he hadn't done anything before, and you just could tell. Glover had a hugely successful career, from appearances in Hollywood films to being the voice of Tetley's Tea. That's better, that's deadly. But it's for that first role that Glover is perhaps most fondly remembered, an achievement not lost on director Ken Loach. It's a real honour to be for the film to be remembered in the way it is, because um, you know a little job we did in 1968 uh, and still remembered. And as they pass uh, the plaque, I hope they'll I hope they'll raise a smile um, to Brian and he'd be pleased at that. It's 25 years since Brian Glover passed away, but in Barnsley. He'll always be someone to celebrate. Adam Fowler, ITV News, Barnsley. And I wonder whether, with that many films and TV credits to his name, what he would make of being remembered as the man from the tea advert. Bless him. <laughs> <laughs> they don't make them like that anymore, they do, not. do they? Countdown from 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Zero. <laughs> Marvellous. Okay, three cheers for Brian Glover. Ronnie. Ronnie. Hippie. Hooray. Hippie. Hooray. Hippie. Hooray. 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 